Hello there, my name is Spiro, Customer Success Manager here at VCAS, bringing you another golden sample of the week. This time what we're going to talk about is some paint processes, powder and liquid paint. What should you show? What's good to show? What cool information and things can you do? I'm going to show you all of that there. And then maybe next week or the week after, what we'll do is we'll talk about some inspection processes, paint inspections and others, things like that, kind of jump in and, and keep on going with this fun little adventure we're on here. We have our work instruction open. I'm going to start it up now. This one here, the first one, is going to be a powder example, powder paint. We're going to have a lot of good information on this one. So if we start it up, we're going to be prompted for some information. This is the configurable inputs, right? This is the VCAS professional data collection stuff. You don't have to have this if you don't want to. We have it in this one. and the other example, we don't. I'm just going to fill some stuff in here. Just like usual, you can scan this in from barcode. You can pull this in from an ERP system. I could just type some stuff in there and all that. We have a checklist in this one and there's a couple of different checklist things that you'll see. This one is checking to make sure everything looks good, parts are free of defects, you're wearing your safety equipment, your PPE, important stuff like that. So these are just basically sanity checks here. We get to our instruction, we're going to see some very good information and this one and paint examples in general may not be the most lengthy, extensive processes, but there's a lot of information that's needed and required. You know, painters are generally very good at their job and experts, but they still need the tools and they still need the information to do their job correctly. So that's the goal here is to provide them with all the information they need. Right here, we have positioning of the parts. We have hang parts as shown, color one coat, so we're explaining what we're doing. And sure, a test plate is used. In this case, just a general note to say, hey, make sure you hang a test plate. We want you to do that so that we can do some non-destructive testing on it. And then we have a little blurb here on refer to the TDS and MSDS attachments to the right. So talking about information right at the operator's fingers tips, what we can do is we can attach different pieces of information. You want to have those SDSs and MSDSs right here attached to the instructions so the operators can check them out. You can do that. You know, everybody has those yellow binders with the instructions, the MSDSs and SDSs on them sitting up against a wall somewhere. But instead of grabbing that off the wall, flipping through it and taking a look and hunting down, finding what you need to, you could have it right here, right at your fingertips. Same deal with the TDS, the technical data sheet. We can have that available and readily available right here. We could take a look at it at any point in time. And this is good for general information for the operators and the painters. This is also good for quality items like the pencil hardness test and the crosshatch adhesion, different items like that. You're going to see all of the properties, all the test pass items on here. You're going to see all that good stuff as well. We go through, we have one more step here, clean parts with alcohol. You may go through like a wash process before this, right? Might spray them down, soap down the parts, rinse them, dry them, things like that. In this case, we're just doing another quick spray with some alcohol. We've got some data collection here. So again, this stuff is optional, but what you've got is some batch numbering, number of quantities, shelf life of your paint. You could have this information. You could collect this information if you need it. So I'm going to fill out some stuff here. I'm just going to type some stuff in, I guess. I'll do that, that. Expiration date, we're good on the expiration date of our paint. Next thing is powder paint settings. Now this is more like your paint gun settings, and this is something that you can set up to. Generally, with your paint gun for powder, you're going to have a program number you could set. You're going to have a voltage, different things like that. You could set that up, or you could just verify that everything looks correct. Got our process, all right, our paint process, and whether it's simple, whether it's complex, one thing that you can do that's pretty cool is add a video. You could have an attachment over here to have a video, you could have a link over here to have a video, and you could show a video of your process. What's going on, how do I paint these products? Whether it be simple, whether it be complex, hey, make sure you get this little spot down here, we always miss it. You can have a video and clearly show the process and how to do this. Painting is a very good area for integrating videos into. Once the parts are painted, you have to cure them, you have to dry them. So we have a step here saying position parts in the oven, cure parts for X amount of time at X amount of degrees. 
So you could always set up something like this and you could stop the instruction right here if you want, right? You put the parts in the oven, you start baking the parts. Okay, let me go to my next job. I can close out of this work instruction. We added one additional step in here. This one is to just talk about removing the parts from the oven after they are done, let them cool before handling, just some general information. You could have this in here, you don't have to. You could just, like I said, right at the oven step, just stop it right there and say, hey, this is the end of your process, end of your operation. Next instruction we have is more of a liquid paint. Now this one is very similar with maybe a couple of differences here, because when you're talking about liquid paint, you're talking about mixing stuff together. You're gonna have mixing ratios of part A and part B. You're gonna have mixing ratios of paint versus reducer or thinner, items like that. Start up this instruction. We don't have a ton of data collection in this one. There are a few checklist items that we'll see. Uh, and actually, one thing I noticed is I didn't add the SDS and the, and the TDS to this one, which I probably should have. And I'll probably end up doing that at some point because that's really good information to have here. We're doing a primer of two coats. We can easily see the positioning of the parts. How do they look? Uh, you know, and in this case, we're ensuring that there are two parts placed in the booth at all points in time and that you're never just jamming it packed full of stuff and, and doing an incorrect process. We do have our data collection here, our batch numbers, our thinner that's used, items like that. Again, you could have this information in here. You don't have to, but if you want to collect those batch numbers, the information, you could always collect it. Liquid paint guns, right? You're going to have different caps, tips. You're going to have different air pressure. You're going to have different settings, right? You can always verify, confirm that you're using the correct items for the specific process. Got our mixing instructions here. This is taken off of the data sheet. Uh, we could always have, again, the data sheet attached over on the side, right? So we always could have that. Here is all of our information, what we're supposed to mix, what is an alternative if there is one, all the information pot life right here for us. And then we get into our paint process. And in addition to that, we've got the watch the video. We've got the film thickness, okay, four to six mils, apply two coats to achieve mill thickness. A lot of information on each step. You know, this one is just four steps here, but a lot of information on each step. It's good stuff here. And another thing we do with this is we don't intend for the operator to maybe watch this every single time, right? The video, the instruction, we want the operator to look at this stuff and then go do and perform the job, especially like in a paint booth, right? You're not gonna have a computer in a paint booth. There's a electrical hazard there, an explosive hazard, so, you know, you're going to have the the computer usually like outside of the paint booth or, or something of that nature, uh, unless it's ESD certified, you know, super crazy and all that stuff like that. So you're going to have basic information or, or detailed information, but not a ton of steps, not a lot of interaction for the operator in the paint department. They're going to walk up, they're going to go through the steps, they're going to see what they need to do, they're going to go in and do their job, and then they're going to come back out Maybe they'll interact some more, maybe they won't. In this case, we have our video, we have our painting video and all that. And we can also have our drying times. Got our curing schedule with all our timers and information on it. Right here for the operators, they can look at all this stuff. And this is again, pulled off of the data sheet, put right into here. You can always update this and, and change it around if you need to. I think that's good for today. Thank you very much for watching this. Look forward to a lot of good content from us. We're always gonna have more and more good content to send out to everybody. And again, thank you very much and have a good rest of your day.